Okay. <clears throat> time we got here. This is from a guy named Lonnie Wilson. I, I'm reading this book and pretty impressed with his book, How to Implement Lean Manufacturing. And Lonnie Wilson has spent 20, 30 years helping companies implement lean. So this is a real experienced guy. And uh, um, the book, I think on Amazon, it's all five star, 20, 30 reviews of it. Everybody that's read it is pretty thrilled with it. I read it, I, was, I really was amazed with this book. Very well done. So here's what he says. <clears throat> In my research on lean transformations that have been succeeding, and especially those that have failed to reach fruition, I have used my and other data and analyzing the successes and failures and doing correlations on each, I found 10 issues that were so common that they needed to be addressed before any significant process toward, progress towards lean could be made. Companies that sex successfully overcame these issues often succeeded, and those that did not failed. These are the lean killers. This is from his perspective of years and years of lean transformation. Lack of lean understanding by top management. And this is uh, a quote from uh, Deming. Support of top management is not sufficient. It is not enough that top management commit themselves for life to quality and productivity. They must know what it is they are committed to. That is, they must, what they must do. These obligations cannot be delegated. And this is extremely common. Plant manager has, Larry, you do the lean stuff. Fail with certainty every time. It'll always fail. Can't be successful. Because you're implementing a complete new operating system that needs support, that needs financing of the entire organization. You can't have the plant leader not be aware of what this is. have no management guidance team. In other words, maybe you have a steering committee that really helps support the initiative as you're going forward so that people can get together and talk about the issues that they're having and why the company's having trouble with implementation and they're trying to solve that problem. <clears throat> Insufficient leadership at many levels. Look at the word he's using, leadership. What's that mean? We all know now because we talked about leadership, so we know what that means. At leadership, you have a chance. Weaker miss missing leadership, you're doomed. People can't do this. They need leadership for this to happen at all levels. Must communicate the why. People don't buy what we do, they buy why we do it. Lack of customer focus. Proper hash and pan planning helps accomplish this. Remember we're talking about our vision. Who do we want to be in five years? Focus on the customer and then cascade it down through the organization. Make lean a workforce reduction mechanism. He's saying don't do this. <laughs> In other words, if people start implementing lean and then people lose their jobs because of the implementation, um, I guess organizations do that when they really don't believe that people are a critical part of it. But if you're really counting on the vast organization top to bottom to really implement solutions, you don't want to alienate them for, by having them work hard to get rid of their own jobs. <clears throat> so you should create a policy statement that no workforce reduction will result from lean implementation. Otherwise, there will be great resistance to change from the very people that understand the details of the process. Anybody see a problem with that or a concern about that? I thought somebody would say, yes. Right, right, but do you see a problem with having the policy that there will be no reduction in workforce related to the lean implementation? Pardon me? Yeah. Right, so you, I can tell you this. There's an awful lot of opportunity for people to lead through attrition. <laughs> And attrition happens for a number of reasons. Uh, attrition happens because people retire. Attrition happens because they take other jobs. Attrition happens because people don't do their job. Don't make lean implementation a way in which to get rid of people. Yes? So if you look at number five, and go back to number one, number five, people who do that in number five is a result of not doing number one. Excellent point. So the, the plant site leader doesn't understand it, doesn't need to understand it. Plant site leader says, we're getting a lot of pressure to take cost out. I need you to lay off 20 people. We've had some improvements in here. We don't need to carry all these people. Then the lower level person says, yeah, but uh, these people are helping us with a lean implementation. And then the plant manager says, I thought that's what we were paying you to do. Aren't you the one leading this up? Are you telling me that you need the people in the, on the floor to help you do this? You can't think for yourself? Maybe you're the one I can take a cost reduction with then, right? I mean, you get crazy scenarios like that if the leader, that's a good point, if the leader doesn't understand. And there's multitudes of these. They have to be integrated into this whole process. Well, okay, have a short-term view of success focused narrowly on financials, meaning what do we have to perform at this quarter, what are our targets, what are our goals. That will always undo lean implementation because lean implementation is a change in business, it's a change of philosophy. It doesn't happen quarter to quarter. It happens year to year. So if the focus is on financials, you're not going to get what you are hoping for. Have in place a financial reward system for individuals that's not supported 
supportive of lean. In other words, some of your managers, their incentive plan really takes them in a different direction. It, the classic is, um, I'm rewarded for efficiency. If I'm rewarded for efficiency, how many widgets can I produce in the shortest amount of time? The last damn thing I want to do for my family and my finances in my career is try to slow down and implement uh, lean, uh, lead time reduction. Because lead time reduction is almost counter to efficiency, almost counter to it. So I'm measured in such a way and I'm rewarded in such a way that causes me to do things that doesn't support lead time reduction. Unstable process flow. The stable process offers predictability. This is back to this stable. Stability, when you saw the lean house, I think some versions of it, stability is at the base. <clears throat> a stable process offers predictability. There must be predictability when designing a pull system to implement the JIT pillar. It doesn't mean we can't have defects. It means we have to be very sure about what they are and it has to be very stable so we can plan around it. They can't be wildly all over the map. Have a closed culture. Characterized by poor communication. Honest discussion around the issues is not encouraged. Typically, those close cultures exaggerate and celebrate success and vary issues. Only when there is excitement around continuous improvement will the culture be conducive to lean. Toyota employees come to work to think. So uh, many, many organizations, they can't say, we're not doing a good job here, we're failing because, or they can't say, hey, here's a problem. They can't expose it for fear of being um, put at risk because they're exposing problems that are related to the area that they're running. So, and that's a difficult thing to do, changing that culture. But people should come to work to improve, and they should be excited about improvement. The product makes itself. The standards and the systems in place, it's autopilot. Product should flow through the system. People, team leaders, they ought to be able to manage that. Everyone else, you're there to improve. So you must be very open about all the problems if you're going to solve them. But this is a real thing. You may not, it might be hard for me to communicate this, but everybody tries to cover up failure and hide from it. Yes? For example, like uh, when I was working in one small unit, we had a lot of defects. And we didn't tell the top management it was defect. We hid it and told them it's work in progress. By the end of one year, it was just too much to hide. And, and why did you do that? A middle manager was trying to cover themselves, right? It's perfect. Perfect example. Very common. So that culture is not saying, hey, <coughs> tell us what's wrong. Let's all work on it. Don't worry about it. You better hide it or you may not be there. Tolerate certain levels of irresponsibility within your culture. Responsibility means I have the authority to change, respond to a problem, and the accountability to sure it happens. Recall the continuous improvement boards and the rules around responsibility. See, this is what I say. Bob was a genius. Bob was a genius. Plant site leader must attend. Responsible person assigned corrective actions must attend. Responsible parties should negotiate dates that allow management of their overall responsibilities, but must negotiate with the employee. Responsible party discusses progress toward close date, two minutes. And remember Erwin Raphael talking about the reason that he was successful at, at Hyundai is because of this. Responsible people must be responsible. And this is what Lonnie Wilson is saying. Don't allow irresponsibility to thrive. There you go.